Well, we've come downstream about a hundred yards or so. That's looking back up the way I just came. You know, it's a pretty good little trail. You got to duck under some trees and stuff, but it's easy hiking. And the uh, the ruins are up here. I can't see them from right here. However, the trail goes right up in this spot right here off to the right so it's pretty obvious the trail going up there and here comes art this is a pretty steep little trail coming up here and be careful not to slip on it then it goes right on up to right next to the edge of the cliff here Found one, huh? Yep. Arm or leg? Man. On his hand. Cat claw got him. Well, that is a four wheel drive climb. It's kind of slippery, so you just have to go slow. But I'm here. This is our view. A visit to the Tonto National Monument would be a full day's trip from Phoenix, but it offers the easiest way to see how and where the Salado lived. The trail is paved, but still a very steep climb and some distance from the parking lot if you're not used to taking walks. There is also a set of ruins and globe called Best Begawa that you can drive to. Both sites have a good example of the everyday pottery, polychrome pottery, and tools used by the Salado culture. Bespigawa was believed to be the cosmopolitan center of the Salado's trading with other cultures, from Mexico to California and Colorado. So, if you're not an experienced outdoorsman, then these are the sites I recommend you visit. You will not be disappointed. Over 8,000 sites have been mapped in the Tonto Basin, according to Scott Wood, the Tonto National Forest archaeologist. But that is only about 40% of the sites believed to be there. At one time, it is believed over 10,000 people occupied the Tonto Basin, farming, hunting, and gathering. They raised corn, cotton, and beans, and utilized the local foods as well. The Salado adopted irrigation techniques from the Hohokam and building techniques from the Anasazi. However, there are three recognized characteristics that distinguished the Salado from the surrounding cultures. The first was their pottery. The Salado's polychrome pottery was traded with other cultures and found to have been scattered far and wide in the southwest. It has been found as far south as the Casas Grandes in Chihuahua, Mexico, as far north as the Zuni in northern New Mexico, and east to the area around Roswell, New Mexico. There are three recognized styles of Salado pottery, the Pinto, Gila, and Tonto. They were all done in red, black, and white. Pinto was the earliest, followed by Gila with bolder designs and heavier paint. Tonto, the third type, was different in that they made a variety of vessels and the red was occasionally combined with the white slip and black paint. Sometimes, even the outside of the pots were painted. The second distinguishing characteristic was that the Hohokam cremated their dead, but the Salado, Anasazi, and Mogion buried their dead. The Salado also buried their dead in a laying position, but used distinct cemetery areas, such as plazas or patios. Most graves were simple holes with a few modest offerings. Some have been found with clay or stone-lined pits, covered with stone or timber caps and contained a wide variety of offerings. Items found include effigy vessels, rare minerals such as obsidian and turquoise. 
Any burial grounds that are discovered by accident or during excavation today would be cataloged and documented by the Tonto National Monument personnel. Then the tribes, believed to be the descendants of the Slado, are notified of the remains. The tribes include the Akchin, the Gila River, the Hopi tribe, the Salt River, Pima Maricopa tribe, Tohono, Donham Nation, and the Zuni tribe of New Mexico. The third difference the Salado had from other cultures was their architecture. It consisted of pueblos, above ground structures of masonry or adobe combined with cobbles or rocks. Salado architecture had some unique features. Covered corridors, upright stone slab foundations, and floor levels of different heights. Houses were generally used for storage and sleeping. Daily activities were conducted outdoors usually on rooftops or patios. Food was cooked, dried, ground, and prepared outside unless the weather was bad. Residential compounds consisted of several rooms, each room occupied by a nuclear family. A wall often surrounded the compounds. Around 1250 to 1300, cliff dwellings began to appear in Salado territory. This occurred about the same time the Gila polychrome displaced the Pinto style. Many speculate that an Anasazi migration may have arrived and been integrated into the Salado culture. Some of the cliff dwellings were constructed with T-shaped doorways like those found in many Anasazi cliff dwellings. The Salado never incorporated kivas into residential compounds like the Anasazi and the Mogollon culture. So that was the floor to this room that we were looking at. You can see they got a little peephole right here. They can peep out. If you wish to see these heritage sites, then please follow Site Adequate so that future visitors can enjoy them in the same condition you found them. Well, I think I just had the worst part of the hike, and that was a hike up the opposing ridge from the ruins to come over here to get a picture of them from the opposite canyon. And that was a nasty little ridge. Probably a small taste of what we're going to be doing tomorrow. There's the ruins. We hiked in from the left side, climbed up that steep slope there, went through them, and came back out the other side. It's a little different. It's kind of six one, half dozen of the other. But uh, it's pretty easy to get up in there and back out. And 
There's the top of the cliff. And this is right where the cliffs just start forming on Coon Creek. The slopes are very gradual all the way up to this point. And this is the first place where it starts bottling up. That's the little wash that we came down in off the main road. It's down that area there. We'll be going back out the same way. Right there, yeah. It'd be a perfect place. Yeah, I believe it's a hawk's nester. Yeah. Some kind of nest, and that's right up above where the, the ruins themselves are. So we just had lunch down here in this nice, cool, beautiful little place in the shade. I checked the temperature up there in the ruins on my thermometer when we were up there earlier, and it was 50 degrees up there in the shade, so uh, pretty nice. We're all stoked up and ready to head back up, huh? Back up the hill, right. through, the, through the pass. Through the pass, back to the truck, on the way 